It's you guys again, the Pokemon fans. Welcome back to a brand new video, guys. This is going to be our third 99% video. We're going to take a look at what the 99% of people don't know about Pokemon Black and White. Of course, some of the things you might know, some of the things, you know, you might not know. So let's get into it, I guess. Diamond Dust. This was a feature introduced in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, but was actually brought back in Pokemon Black and White, where it will start snowing Diamond Dust on December 31st in Isra City to celebrate New Year's Eve. When you configure your Nintendo DS back in the day, you would set a birthday for yourself, and when you decide to hop on Pokemon Black White or Black and White 2, you get a happy birthday wish inside of the Pokemon Center to congratulate you. This is easily missed if you decide to not play the game on your birthday, or if you lied about your date of birth when you entered into your DS after launching it for the first time and you don't remember when it was. In Pokemon Black and White, you have the ability to change your trainer card depending on certain achievements that you might get. For the Silver Trainer card, you have to obtain all the Entra Link powers. For the Red card, you have to get 49 Streak in both the Super Single and Super Double Subway lines in the Battle Subway, which is difficult. For the Purple card, you have to simply defeat the Elite Four. For the Green card, well, this one is the one you start with. And for the Gold card, you need to obtain all the Pokemon musical items in the game. And for Black and White cards, you have to complete the National Pokedex. Speaking of music items, in Opelucid City, you can get musical props from an old man in the lower left building of the city. This man will keep giving you music props every day until he has no more props to give you, which will be a total of five that he will hand to you. Battling the Game Freak employees. So once you defeat the Pokemon Black and White 2 games, you'll be able to take on two Game Freak employees in Castalia City inside of the Game Freak HQ there. When you head inside, you can find a hiker trainer called Nishino, whose full name is Koji Nishino. He's a game designer of the Pokemon games that has been involved in pretty much all the Pokemon games since the original red and green versions. He was also the assistant on the production of the anime movie Lucario and the Mystery of Mew. If you take him on, he has loads of normal and water type Pokemon with a Clefable, Wigglytuff, Ezumaru, Alamomola, Licky Licky, and a Snorlax. But this isn't the only employee you can find. You can also find Morimoto once more. Morimoto, whose full name is Shigeki Morimoto, has made loads of appearances as a Game Freak employee in the video games. You can find him in Sun and Moon as well as Sword and Shield also. Either way, he's a game designer and programmer that works at Game Freak and has also been involved in developing the games all the way from the original Red and Green. And his team consists of a Lypard, a Simipore, a Simisi, Simi Sage, a Swoobat, and a Zebstreaker. So, Castalia City is pretty awesome and there's loads of interesting things to find in it, but but one of the strangest yet coolest has got to be the Castalia City Massage Place. So when you are on the Pokemon Gym Street of Castalia City, you can enter the building of the opposite side of the gym, and inside you'll find a character that will offer you to massage your Pokemon. You can do this once a day, it will increase your Pokemon's happiness. A cute way to sort of increase happiness, and possibly a reference to the Pokemon groomers from the Pokemon anime, which are people that offer services like massages, spa treatments, and etc. for Pokemon to increase their friendship. And these first appeared, uh, you know, also as sort of Pokemon breathers, such as Brock and Susie, in the episode Pokemon Fashion Flash, where we are shown Pokemon getting massages as such. Now, some things about the beta version of Pokemon Black and White. Uh, so some retailers in the UK like Game and GameStation actually used a pre-release box art that used the name Alios for the region's actual name compared to the real and final name, which is Unova, which is kind of interesting as this was uh, also the name used in the pre-release and post-release demo events in the UK for Pokemon Black and White. In Pokemon Black and White 2, there is a female trainer named guitarist Billy Joe, whom has a name and also appearance that resembles a sort of female version of the guitarist and singer of the band Green Day, Billy Joe Armstrong. So, this little side quest was something that most people probably missed when playing Pokemon Black 2 and White 2. But if you head to Anvil City and find a girl that has lost her Pan Sage, she will ask that you help her find it. Then, it, to actually find it, you need to head over to Nimbasa City where you can find a green conductor who will make a reference to a guy with green hair, find the Pan Sage, and then he will bring it to back to the girl if you ask him to. If you go to the girl again, she will give you a reward for helping her get her Pan Sage back. The Singing Woman. Under the village bridge, you can go to the hidden room, which is kind of a secret area right under the bridge. Now, if you enter it, you can find a girl that inside of the actual cave itself is practicing her singing. There's also a girl at top of the bridge, which you know, kind of thinks that it might be a ghost down there. So if you talk to her actually before finding the singing girl and then talk to her afterwards again, she will reward you with a citrus berry. So, there is a cute little hidden thing in Pokemon Black 2 and Pokemon White 2, where if you head over to uh, Hamilau City and enter one of the buildings, you can find an old lady that will ask you if you can walk her Mienfo. But, here's kind of the thing, this will allow you to actually have Mienfo follow you around the building, you know, literally following you. However, you aren't able to leave the building, as she will get angry if you try. So, you just gotta keep walking around the building itself, or inside the house itself, with Mienfo uh, for the old lady, until she is happy with it. And also, she will complain at you for checking the garbage, 
uh, can as well as the TV because apparently it's a bad influence for her little Pokemon. Eventually she will say you did a good job and reward you with a pearl. But yeah, kind of a mean old lady, even if you are like helping her, she seems like, you know, unsure if you're doing these things by the side. I don't know, like why she gets so mad. She's being way too rude for no reason. But also on top of that, it's kind of an interesting thing because it's just a hint, you know, to the old feature of following Pokemon, which didn't return later on until what? Like, let's go Pikachu, let's go Eevee technically? At Route 9, next to Opelucid City, you can find a girl that asks you to buy her a Hyper Potion. If you do this for her, she will give you 1,200 Poke Dollars. And if you buy her Hyper Potion after getting that money, she will give you an Energy Route as a reward, which is appreciated and kind of a cute little side quest. Hmm. Before we continue, guys, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, because uh, you really should. Like, we make some great content on here, so make sure to subscribe and also leave a like down below. It'd be really appreciated. Let's continue. In Striaton City, you can head inside the restaurant there and go to the end and ask for a show. If you do this, three panseers will make an appearance and dance for you, and you have to play a game of which panseer has the big mushroom, basically, or, you know, pick one of the three, and you have to find the panseer that has the big mushroom on it. And if you choose correctly, you will receive a big mushroom as a reward. And they're incredibly like, you know, kind of cute event that is just there and can be done once a day for the hell of it. Icarus City features a tiny house, which if you enter it, will have a lady that will make you do a pep quiz. Now the quiz, if done correctly, which will require you to enter in certain things, will grant you a reward of an antidote as a reward. So yeah, these quiz things have been in Pokemon games in the past. I mean, they've been in generation two as well. And even I think in generation three, if you guys remember them, there's like quizzes all over Pokemon games. So I I do love it whenever they do make them as they're just kind of a fun little side activity and in this case you have this little one in the tiny house. So inside of the sewers of Castalia City, you can find a scientist lady working in a lab. Now, if you speak to her each day, she will give you an item that she has succeeded in testing. Uh, these items are usually healing items such as potions, super potions, hyper potions, and all that. However, I must say though that it's kind of sketchy of a place to make potions if it's in a sewer. Makes me wonder what's in these super potions and hyper potions and stuff. Like, what's actually in them if they're being made or tested rather in a sewer in particular? I Route 5, you can find a Pokemon breeder that will sell you berries. These are EV reducing berries, which can be used to make your Pokemon more friendly by lower different parts of their stats. And personally, I totally missed this lady back in there when I was a kid and playing through Pokemon Black. But hey, maybe I wasn't the only one. And maybe some of you guys also missed this Pokemon breeder. Who knows? Inside of the Twisting Mountain, you can find a man who's going to give you a fossil each day. Now, he does this after you've obtained the National Pokedex, and these fossils are the following ones. The Armor Fossil, the Cloud Fossil, the Dome Fossil, the Helix Fossil, Old Amber, the Root Fossil, Skull Fossil. So yeah, a mixture of Kanto, Hoenn, and Sinnoh Pokemon for you to enjoy in your team. And this is available, I think, in both Pokemon Black 2, White 2, as well as the original Black and White. So when you pop into Undella Bay, there is a small chance you may or may not run into a wild jelly scent that is sort of just sitting in the water offshore. This jelly scent returns to the bay on Mondays in Pokemon Black 2, and on Thursdays in Pokemon White 2. And in Pokemon Black 2, it's a male, which of course is more blue, with its hidden ability. And in White 2, it's a female, which is of course pink, with its hidden ability as well. So yeah, definitely a cool little thing, seeing them in the overworld. And I do hope now going forward that we're just going to keep seeing Pokemon in the overworld for the future of the franchise. Now, if you're looking for more hidden Pokemon, then you are in luck. Because in Pokemon Black 2 and White 2, there is also a Mandibuzz hidden on Route 4 in Pokemon Black 2. And that will appear on Thursdays behind a house on the route. But on Mondays in Pokemon White 2, there will be a Braviary that you can find there instead behind the same house, kind of being an exclusive that's on the opposite days that the Jellicent was on. So it's kind of another like cool little thing where you had a Pokemon in the overworld and it was just kind of there and honestly really, really cool of a feature to be honest. So each week in Anvil Town, you can talk to this man in the city itself, or the town itself rather, each week. He will provide you with a gift of an item that was lost in the Battle Subway. This is based upon your progress within the Battle Subway itself. Some of these items are like Calcium, Carbos, Elixirs, and Full Restores, and actually loads loads more that you can actually get your hands on. By the entrance to the Two Blind Bridge on Route 8, there is a Parasol Lady who will give you a specific item depending on basically what time of the day it is. Now you can go 
back each day to this lady and get the items, so to say, right? There are four items spread across each day, but you can only obtain one item at a time. These items are the damp rock, the heat rock, the smooth rock, and the icy rock that you may may you know, may or may not need in your Pokemon playthrough. In Necrini City, in the cafe, each day there will be a different character or different characters on the bottom floor of the cafe itself. And on Thursdays, the trainer who owns the mysterious dirty handkerchief item will make an appearance as well, and you can hand it back to them. And on Sundays, you can talk to the waitress and she will give you a fluffy tail. Now, one Pokemon that in black and white, only a few people got to enjoy having on, you know, on their team in general was Victini. Now, to get Victini in the game, so you need to obtain the Liberty Pass, which was given out over the Wi-Fi system, uh, you know, the kind of Wi-Fi mystery gift system. Now, if you have the Liberty Pass, you can grab it and go to Castalia City, enter one of the boats, and this will take you to the Liberty Island, where you will need to grapple through loads of battles against Team Plasma members in order to get to Victini. And in the end, there you have a level 50 Victini to add to your team, with the moves Quick Attack, Incinerate, Confusion, and Endure, and the ability Victory Star. In Akumula Town, on the northeastern side, there is a house that inside of it, there is a lady that, if you speak to her, will ask you to show her basically a smaller big Pokemon. Actually, there's another guy in there. And if you show them basically a smaller big Pokemon, depending on what they want to see, you know, usually spe specifying what species in particular they want to see, if you show them either one of those, you can get, if you show a small one, a Poke Doll, and if you show a large one, you might get a Fluffy Tail. In Pokemon Black 2 and White 2 in Driftwale City, when you help out the old Team Plasma against the new Team Plasma, the Sage Dale will be thankful that you helped out and offered you to take on the task of looking after N's Zoroa, and which basically N left behind when he headed out on his journey. And in Castalia City, in the Pokemon Gym Street on the third floor on the building on the left, you can find Fennel, who is there doing some Dream World research. Now, by speaking to one of her assistants, after you defeat the Elite Four, you'll be given an EV at level 10 with the hidden ability Anticipation. So definitely like cool, like two really cool Pokemon to get as gifts. I mean, and Zoro is awesome. And then also a free Eevee. I mean, who wouldn't want, you know, who wouldn't want that? So if you enjoy getting free Pokemon, this has got to be one of the coolest and best gifts, to, you know, to ever receive. But in Flosessi Town, after you defeat Benga in the Black City or the White Forest, which those depend on which game you are playing, but once you have defeated, you know, Benga in the main attraction, Benga will visit Alder, and while there, he will give you, the player, a very, very special prize, a Gibble or Dratini, depending on which game you beat him within. And that's not even the coolest part. The coolest part is that this Gibble and Dratini are both shiny. Yes, shiny, and they also hold the item EXP share on them as well. This is such a cool thing, by the way, like just in general, just such a cool thing that these two Pokemon just casually are shiny and free gifts you can receive. I mean, I haven't seen this in other Pokemon games really when I think about it that offer really something like this because Black and White and Black and White 2 really offered some of the coolest features and just things for you to do and awesome gifts that were not just always handed your way, but kind of like, you you know, earned in an interesting way, right? So honestly, can't wait to see if they bring stuff like this back in the future, especially also whenever they make, you know, remakes of Gen 5. As a callback to the original Pokemon Red and Blue, on Marvelous Bridge, you can find a man who will sell you a rare Pokemon for 500 Poke Dollars. Now, what is this rare Pokemon? Well, it's not else than Magikarp itself. So yes, another scammer. Seems like Magikarp scammers are rampant all across the Pokemon world. And guess what? You can find them in the Unova region as well. Now, one mystery gift event Pokemon that many didn't get to enjoy since it was Japan only was the gifted Piplup. This was the first Wi-Fi event ever for Pokemon Black 2 and White 2, and there was loads more actually, but this one in particular was a special Piplup that was a tie-in with the movie short Meloetta Sparkling Recital. And uh, this one knows the special move Sing, as well as Round and Feather Dance and Peck, so kind of an interesting Piplup to say the least, but also one that, you know, unless you were in Japan, you didn't really know much about. And then there is the three great events that I think are all worth, you know, kind of including here. There is the Keldeo Secret Sword event, the Meloetta Relic Song, and the Funfest mission, and as well as the Genesec Special Drive quest. Now, first is Keldeo and the Secret Sword event, where if you take a Keldeo obtained from a special event to the Pledge Grove and interact with a special rock, it will be given the ability to learn the move Secret Sword. If this move is taught to Keldeo, it will change into its resolute form. Second is when you obtain a Meloetta from a special event. If you take it to the cafe in Castalia City, you will learn about how Meloetta lost its voice in times past. It will soon get inspired and finally start singing. Doing so allows you to teach it a special move Relic Song, which will change Meloetta's form in battle whenever used. And thirdly and finally, there is a Genesect. So when you obtain a Genesect from a special event, if you take it to the P2 lab, 
you'll find a scientist in there. He will tell you about how he has been the one to have researched Genesect and modified it to basically aid in a lot of Team Plasma's kind of plans and evil deeds, but that he basically essentially failed to win the approval of N with these methods as N does not appreciate kind of man-made Pokemon and like, you know, doing this to Pokemon. But either way, he will then challenge you to a battle and if you do end up defeating him, he will reward you with a gift of two special drives. These items, when you actually put them on Genesect, will change the type of its special move, Technoblast. There are a t basically a total of four drives, but they're all exclusive to each game, so if you want to get them on both, you know, both on one game, you will have to do some trading and some, you know, weird stuff to get it there. But yeah, basically these are three events that are really cool and I wish they would bring back stuff like this more. Oh yeah, also, there's this weird oversight in Pokemon Black and White, uh, where if you go to this one tile outside of the Pokestar Studios, where you can surf basically into the tree and into the wall. Uh, yeah, that's what you can do. You can literally surf into, you know, into the trees and into the wall. Uh, you do, however, just end up getting stuck there and you can't really do much else. Just kind of a random oversight, though, from the developers. And there's loads of these in Pokemon games, but yeah, just a random one I thought was fun to mention. All right, and that's pretty much it for this video. Though I'll be honest, there's actually loads of other stuff that I didn't cover because honestly, Black and White and Black and White 2 combined have loads more stuff so if you maybe want to see a part two let me know in the comment section down below or if you want to see pokemon crystal next let me know by commenting which one you want do you want a part two or do you want crystal instead that's it i'll see you next time